welcome. Oh my goodness, you all sounded amazing. We can hear you singing, it was so beautiful. Welcome, welcome to the welcome, Crossing welcome. Church. We are so happy to see you this Resurrection Day. Welcome. Man, you fired up, Woo! fired up. Amen to that. We can also take a moment to celebrate the grand opening of our South Shore campus if we want to give them some love. What's up, we South love Shore? We're so proud of you. What's up? We are also, we are in overflow. We're in the lobby. We're in the parking lot. In Jesus' name, <laughs> say hi to everybody all over all the campuses. God is good. You may be seated. Give somebody a high five. Say, you look marvelous. <laughs> Welcome, 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 welcome. Delighted that you're here today. Wanted to just pause for a, <laughs> for a second to, uh, to thank the Lord. A special recognition for a couple of people. Mr. Steve Reddy, he is our, our facilities development manager. He has done something down at the South Shore uh, building. I don't know if you know about building in, in Hillsborough County. It, is, it can be a challenge, right? Uh, we, we broke ground on the building down at South Shore just a few months ago in August of last year. It's an incredible building. And also, Pastor Hector Rivera and his team down at South Shore, would you give them a huge hand? Great job. Great job. So just super quickly, new building down there. We want you to come join us uh, May 5th. We're going to be down there for baptism. We call it baptism blowout. Come hang out with us. We want you to see it in person. And the reason why is because we want to impact that community for Christ and see great things in the Lord. We know that God's doing wonderful things. And we can stay excited because we are launching our Plant City campus in September of this year. Woo! America! Here we go. September is going to be fun. So the philosophy here at the Crossing Church is that we're, we're one church with one vision in multiple locations. And uh, God, we're trying to export the chicken sandwich like a little Chick-fil-A, okay? So, so what you get in one place, you get exactly the same thing in the other places. Super excited. Uh, we're praying and asking beyond these three campuses that uh, God would allow. And, and just it's, it's God that does all of this. Man can't do this. So um, that God would do this and just, uh, if he allows us to, to add an additional three campuses beyond those over the next six to eight years, thank you so much for being a part of the vision here at the Crossing Church. God bless you. All right. Are you ready for Resurrection Weekend? All right, all right, all right. Let's begin by praying. Lord Jesus, we thank you for every family represented here at our South Shore campus, in our lobby, in the Life Center, and in this room, Jesus. And we thank you that you are working right now in hearts and minds. You're opening the ears and the hearts to receive. Thank you, Jesus, that you resurrected, that you give us life. Thank you, God, that we get to hear you and see you, and that we get to do it together. We pray for every family, every father, every mother. We, we're praying and asking that we would see something today as sons and daughters, relatives, that we would leave here changed and impacted from the inside out. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Would you thank my bride? Give her a big hand. Great to, uh, great to have her with me on stage for a little while. She, she was ill, and uh, it was back last year, and she was, she was sick. She had mononucleosis. She had it for three and a half months, and, um, man, it was tough in our household because I recognize all the things that she does. <laughs> right? Dad had triple duty. I had triple, triple duty. So we want to talk about uh, today just about, uh, about the gospel, about Jesus, the resurrection. I'm very, very excited about today because we have an opportunity together to trust Christ maybe in a way that you haven't uh, before. And so we want to, I, want, I want to begin just with uh, a question, okay, a question uh, out of the book of Job. It's not the book of Job, okay, not the book of Job. I had somebody say to me, hey, pastor, there's the book of Job in the Bible. I said, well, it's a biblical concept. God bless you. You know what I mean? Hard work. Is, is. So, uh, <laughs> Job, Job 14, 14, uh, if a man dies, uh, will he live again? And um, so we're very, very busy with, with this life and the things that we've got going on. And, and uh, how many of you know we go through a little trouble, don't we? We go through a little trouble. And so um, we don't want to think about sometime far, 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 far away, can I get an amen, where we might not be around. We, we don't really want to, we, we don't want to think about that. We don't want to, we don't want to ponder that. But 
so today, we just want to pause there for a second and think about that so we can live the right way in here. And so 80% of the people in America say, yes, I, yes, I believe. I'm, I'm a Christian. Yes, I, I believe in, in Jesus. But then 80% of the people, um, um, I don't know if that makes the translation into the life that Jesus would call us, the inner man, the inner woman, the strength, the nobility, the grace, the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of us, that, trans, that translation, that movement in us. And so when we get to the end today, and I hope to just kind of walk us, walk us there together, we get to the end and, and, and we finish. There's an, there's an activation portion in this, and the activation portion is actually doing something with your belief. It's actually, it's actually going to somebody, and there's going to be people at both campuses, it's actually just taking a step from where you are and coming to somebody and saying, I am receiving Jesus as Savior. I, I'm trusting Jesus as my Savior. I, because what that does is, that, how many of you remember getting married? Good, some of you do. I, I don't know if you're <laughs> married or not, or if you're dating or courting or whatever that might be. It's, there's, there's, the, there's that activation portion, which is, hey, I, I like you. Hey, I'm dating you. Hey, I want to, you know, and then, then really, you know, we're going <laughs> to put a ring on it, Right? We're going to do that. Then there's the commitment portion. And the commitment portion really is, is the part that we want to get to today. We want to get into that place where we would say, yeah, okay, yes, Jesus is Lord. Yes, he was raised from the grave. But, and I want him. I, I want whatever that means to live inside of me in my life, in my life. So um, I got a little illustration here that I want to walk you through, and I'm going to try to do it pretty quickly, Okay. I'm trying not to do any disgrace to the scripture. There's a void between man and God, and, and we try to get there one way or another. Three categories that I think are important. We could put other categories up here. Culture is one. Religion is another. Science is another. I'll be brief. In culture, what we do is, <clears throat> how many of you know that if we ask the wrong question, we're absolutely sure to get the wrong answer? If you ask the starting question and the question is wrong, then the answer to the question, whatever they might be, is wrong. And so here's what culture says, okay? And see if you can join me in understanding this. We'd say, um, how, many, how many of you believe that money is a problem in our culture? Would, would everybody agree? This, yes, money is, 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 money, you know, is the root of all evil. No, the love of money is the root of all evil. That's what the Bible says. Money's not the root of all evil. Some, you know what I mean, there's disparaging, there's trouble if you have not enough, and there's a whole lot of trouble if you have more than you can spend. If you have more than you can spend, God bless you, come talk to me after the service, okay? <laughs> I love you. Uh, rare, rare, rarity. So, you know, culture says it's on, the, it's on the outside. It's on the outside. It's money. No, it's war. How many of you think war is terrible? War is terrible. So no, no. That the issue, the issue is race. And and please hear me. Please understand the things that I'm mentioning. I think are very, very important. They're incredibly important. We'd say so. So the problem. What's the problem? What's the problem? Is is where we want to start. What is the problem? How come we break each other and hurt each other? And how much, you know marital strife and difficulty in our kids and the world and war, famine, flood, finances, sickness, disease. All those things. What's the problem? And then we finally get to driving on I-4 and mosquitoes. <laughs> What's the deal? Why is this so hard? What's going on? Culture says it's all the stuff out here. It's, it's race. Race is important. It, it's sexuality. It's gender. You know, gender reassignment now is being assigned to eight-year-olds. <laughs> Sorry, that's another sermon. It's, it's politics, and man, could we split the church today with politics, couldn't we? Come on, we could, I, I can do it with a football team. So if you, I'm not a Gator fan, I'm, I'm a Sooner fan, so God bless you, I, I love you. We could say Gators and Seminoles or Gators and Hurricanes, and we could, man, you could get so angry, get angry right out of the gate. 
I, I, I'm upset. Culture says it's out here. It's government. It's politics. It's, and it's men trying to control war and money or religion. It's all these things. But the gospel, church, the gospel says the issue isn't on the outside. The issue is on the inside. The issue's on the inside. And so the book of James says this, and I want you to see the scripture. It says to get rid of the filth, the evil that's in us, in our lives, all of us together, all of men have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all do. Everybody does. Welcome to the club. It's called being human. We've got this stuff in us. And it says, and humbly accept the word of God implanted, which is able to save our souls. And, and so that means your mind will and your emotions that you exchange spirits you get the spirit of God living inside of you. And I have the audacity to believe this, and I hope that you can join me in this. I believe that redeemed humanity can get it right in marriage. Amen. I think redeemed humanity can get it right in generations and in sexuality and with gender and in politics and all these things. We can make the right decisions. Why? I have a guide. I've got a guide. I've got, I've got something on the inside of me, and I've exchanged my life with Jesus, and now I have a way to walk. Okay, the next thing that we want to look at as I transition here is, is religion. Religion does a little bit better. It says in, instead of being on the outside, it is on the inside. So religious leaders and so on, they address things that are inside. But Jesus is the only one who addresses this thing called sin. All right, everybody say sin. sin. you got to whisper when you say it, sin. 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 Thank you. You're so cooperative. That's awesome. Sin. Some of you are like, sin. Sin is the motive and the action that is contrary to the law of God. Words, deeds, or actions that are contrary to the, the law of God. And let me tell you just briefly about the law of God. He, he sets it up just like we have our driving lanes that we kind of ignore on I-4, right? It's set up like that for boundaries for the right reason. Is to keep everybody safe. It's not so, God doesn't, God is the greatest. You'll have the most fun you've ever had in your entire life following Jesus. Amen. Promise you. Here's the reason why. Because, yeah, look, I used to, I lived, I lived on the other side. I grew up, everything that you could do, everything that you could do, I did. And it would be fun to compare notes after service. Like, oh, I did that. Oh, I did too. Oh, I did that. I did too. And, and so, the problem with that lifestyle, with a sinful lifestyle, is that it's like, yes! Come on, can you join me? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! It's a party. But then you pay. Man, you pay. And I want to tell you, the payment is bigger than the party. The payment, church, the payment, it really... And you can't get away from the payment. You just, you really can't. So Jesus is the only religious leader that deals with this thing called sin. And, and he does it in the scripture. And so when he hung on the cross and he died, and he really did hang on the cross and he really did die, praise God, he really did get up from the grave too. He really did get up. Okay. <laughs> Hebrews 4.15, he, he says this. Okay, Hebrews 4.15, he says, he, the righteous one, the one who had never sinned, he came as a human being, he experienced all the things that we did as a human, and yet he was without sin. He passed the test perfectly. That's why he's the singular figure in history for us. And what it says is, for we don't have a high priest who's unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who's been tempted in every way, just as Jesus, and then, but he passed the test. So in Hebrews 4.15, he says, the one who had no sin became sin on my behalf and your behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God. Okay, so if the problem, church, if the problem is sin, and it's not just somebody thing, some thing, some government, some money, something, if it's in here, Jesus is the one that he says, he deals with it in here, and I get justified, he got crucified so that I would be justified. He took the punishment and the penalty so that I could get pardoned. So, so and Jesus is the only one. When you look at religious figures in history, Jesus is the, is the only one. He's the unique one in understanding this paradigm. Then, I, I, how many of you are glad that Jesus conquered the grave? Sin, death, 
and the grave. 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 55. If you want to just go back a little bit, it says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? And then it goes on, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. Now watch this. We, we said that this law, sin is us breaking ourselves on the law. So here's what Jesus does. He takes the law, and he crucifies and completes the entire law in his death. So you and I get to live not how we want to live, but we live having completed the law, now living by the Spirit of God. And so you'd say, isn't it good news? <laughs> Listen, I just want to let you know. We could never live up to all these laws. There's, there's, there's no way you can live up to all these laws. But what you can do is you can live in the spirit of God and, and now the law is the lowest bar. Oh, little person's unhappy. And we love families. Can we give it up for families at the Crossing Church, man? So I want to say this too. At the campuses and overflow, I, I want to say this. Life, that's what we want is life in the church. We want life in the church. Honestly, we do. We want life in the church. We, we want, we, we're want. we willing to deal with everything, all the stuff, on the sleeve, everything. We, we want it. We want it. We want you here, okay? And so the other thing that Jesus does, he, he deals with sin. He deals with death and the grave so that I don't have to be afraid of the grave, and he deals with Satan. He, he really does a death blow to Satan. In Genesis 3.15, it says that, uh, Satan came as a serpent that he would strike our heel, but when you trust in Jesus, God gives you a pair of snake boots. Some of you know what those are. A pair of boots that come up to about here. If, if you're from the country, you know what snake boots are. If you're not, God bless you. <clears throat> the snake boots are fortified boots. They're kind of leather so that if you're around snakes and they strike you and they will if you're around them that you uh, are protected now from the strike and so satan satan is real he comes to steal kill lie and destroy and if we let him if without christ we're kind of unprotected we're wearing flip-flops but when we trust in Jesus, we get those set of boots, and when he strikes us, he can't strike us any longer. And here's the good news, what the scripture says. He would strike our heel, but now we have the power to. That's a, I don't want to get too graphic. So when we understand that, listen, I want to ask you a question. <clears throat> aren't you glad that he took care of our sin? He's, he's, I mean, because no one else says that. Culture doesn't say that. Religious leaders, other religious leaders don't say that. And then when we get down to science, we just have to say that scripture and the science aren't at odds with each other. If you're a, if you're a thinker, somebody who's like, you know, I want to talk about the scientific, all those things, all right? Lee Strobel is the guy you want to look up, okay? Lee Strobel. Case for Christ and evidence demands a verdict, Lee Strobel. So when we get to science, I want you to see the scripture, okay? Here's what Jesus said. For in him, who? In him. Who's him? Jesus. Everybody, the answer is always Jesus in church. <laughs> Jesus. Kids, here, do you want some candy? Jesus. Just, did, did you have fun? Jesus. Yes, the answer is Jesus, right? How's the parking lot? Jesus! Oh, Jesus! Be nice to each other. When you're coming and going, please be nice to each other. Okay, can we get a covenant right now? Will you be nice to each other, please? Nothing like coming in and out of church and exchanging the first finger of fellowship. Be nice. You're in church. <laughs> all, for all, all things were created by him. So, so, and I do this tongue in cheek. Again, I say it every time we get together. I say, do you believe in the Big Bang? Absolutely. God spoke and bang. It happened. Okay? 
That's not to be demeaning. That's not to be demeaning in any way. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, the neutron, the lepton, the atom. He says, God says, I created it all. In Jesus, I, whether thrones or powers, so celestial bodies, the cosmos, things that are living. Do, church, do you recognize, do you believe that there are things other than what we see? Man, yeah. It's not just, it's not just this. He created it all. All things have been created through him and for him. So since that is true, we would do well, we, we would do well to crown him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and to say with our mouths, every knee will bow, Jesus. And every tongue will confess that you're Lord in heaven and on the earth. In heaven and on the earth. Lord, we believe in you and we trust you. So when we get to answering the question if out of the book of Job, <laughs> if a man dies, will he live again? The answer is, <laughs> you guys are already answering it, yes. <laughs> Even put a, <laughs> you can say this with me, if I, if I trust in Christ, trust in Christ. If, I believe, if I believe, if I receive, I'm going to talk about that in a second. After I die, then I live. And in my life, I have abundant life. All right. So I want you to just reflect here for a second in a little illustration. Today, he has set before you life and death. Choose life. For if anyone is in Jesus Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and look, new things have come. For you were redeemed from your empty way of life, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the sacrifice of Christ. He was chosen before the foundation of the world, but has been revealed for you. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we praise him today? He is resurrected. Come on, church, he is resurrected. He's not in the grave. He said what he would do, and then he did it. He said what he would do, and then he did it. And, and so we've come to that place just in, in, in Scripture where we'd say, okay, now, now, now what? There's two things, I believe, and then I receive. I believe. Yeah, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he rose from the dead. And then I receive. I actually go to someone, say someone. I actually go to somebody, and I say, I'm trusting Christ. You actually, you actually go to somebody. You actually go to somebody and say, I'm trusting Christ. That's what the scripture says. Let me, let me show you. Romans 10, 9 through 13, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe, and you're justified right here, just real deep in here. You know, if you try to figure it out all the time, faith is just saying, I trust that I'm going to understand everything that you say in this word. Why? Because you're going to give me your spirit. And when your spirit comes into me, it gives me illumination for revelation. If I don't have, if you don't, you could shout at a corpse. You could cut a corpse. A corpse doesn't care. But when you give your life to Jesus, you are born again. 
the new life of God comes to spring up inside of you and the spirit of God comes to live in you. And so now you understand things that you couldn't understand and it makes sense and you have the ability by faith to say, by faith this is appropriated. By faith I believe. By faith I stay. By faith I confess. By faith I live. By faith I'm justified by my faith. By my faith. Trusting. For it's with your heart that you believe and you're justified. It's with your mouth that you confess and that you're saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there's no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is Lord over all who richly blesses all who call on him. For here's the punctuation point. Say everybody. Everybody. Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Will be saved. So how many of you grew up Catholic or you are Catholic? Come on, there's a third of our population at least, right? It's confusing, I was, you know what I mean? I went to a Baptist college, my mom said, you're always gonna be Catholic. I said, okay, okay. And so I was in college and whether you're in college or whether you're 45 or you're 50, the drama got to me in my life. The difficulty finally got to me. <clears throat> and I, I, uh, I was so distraught, I actually was playing Russian roulette with some friends. <clears throat> and and uh, I'll, I'll fast forward the story. I won't tell you the whole story. I just want you to know that's how, that's how, um, and look, I had everything. I was on a full ride football scholarship. I came from an incredible family. I had a beautiful girlfriend. What's up? I had, I had, I had money. My parents rented a house for me and I rented to other football players and I had, I had money while I was in college. I had extra money. And how rare is that? I had money, I had relationships, I had a good background and I was desperate because I wanted answers about what's really real on the inside and I after going through that experience I went home and I said to God I said I said if you're, if you're real I need to know and I need to know right now not not tomorrow not next week I need to know right now and I had an encounter with God that uh, I'll never forget I had an encounter with God very powerful but my life did not change until I came to church because I had the encounter, but then I went right back to my life and I just did exactly what I used to do. And how many of you know that you can believe in Jesus and still live in the world? You can believe in Jesus and still uh, uh, practice things that you don't believe in. I say, I believe in Jesus, but I'm living like hell. I believe in Jesus, but then I went to a church and I heard the gospel preached and the preacher said, come confess, come say to somebody, I want Jesus as my savior. I want him, I, I'm, not, I'm not playing anymore, I'm not, I'm not joking anymore, I'm not, I'm not messing around, I'm not just saying, hey, Jesus is all right with me. I'm coming and saying, I wanna give my life to Jesus, tell another person. And when I did, at that point, I heard my own ears say, I'm giving my life to Jesus and something set in in me. My belief took a, a hold of me. And from that moment on, my life began to change. And I can't tell you how radically it changed, how radically. I wouldn't have, in a million years, I would have never dreamed I'd be up here in a pink suit. I, in a zillion years. I go back to my class reunion and I go, what do you do? And I go, oh, I'm a preacher. They're like, oh, 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 oh. Really? You? I remember. So, right? There's, yeah, right? So I don't know where you are. I don't know if it's your marriage thing or your finance thing or your heart thing or your dad thing or your mom thing or what it is, your religion thing. I don't know what it is, but we want to, let's stand together. Let's just stand both campuses, overflow if you would. 
You know, if you're in the parking lot watching on your phone, we love you. God bless you. Let's just, we want to just believe and then we want to receive. And, I, and I'm asking you, I'm prompting you already. The receiving part is not staying. Don't stay. If you, when you receive, if you just go, I'm just, I'm staying right here. I'm saying, come at both campuses. There are people that are down here. And I want you to just say something simple. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm trusting Jesus. You're just going to, it's just prompted inside of you. If you're in the parking lot, come in here. Go to Overflow. If you're at South Shore, you're doing the same thing. You're just, it's a prompting to say, I believe, but I'm also going to receive. I'm going to receive. I don't want to stay the same. I'm not, I didn't just come to church just to see the dude in the pink jacket. Everybody, are you with me? Come on, church, are you with me? So we all, and you don't have to close your eyes. You don't have to close your eyes and pray. Just say, I believe Jesus is the Lord and he was resurrected. Okay, praise God. Praise God. Do you know even the devil believes? But the devil does not live for Jesus. The devil can make that confession. Now, this is the part, the receiving part is what matters, church. So on the count of three, both campuses, overflow, parking lot, at home, our awesome military. Come on, can we give a hand for our military? Aren't they awesome around the world? On the count of three, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. On the count of three, you'd say, I, I, I believe, yep, yeah, but I'm also willing to receive. I want to receive. I want to, t- I want to say it to somebody. I'm going to say it to somebody, wherever you are. On the count of three, wherever you are, in the house, in the parking lot, in overflow, on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand if you want to believe. On the count of three, one, two, three. I want to receive. Come on. I want to receive. Can you hold your hands up for me? Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. Come on, we can do better than that, church. Come on. Hold them up wherever you are. All right. Now, in the part of receiving, you can begin to come wherever you are. If you raised your hands, just walk to somebody. Walk to somebody and just say, I'm trusting Christ. That's all that's required. I'm trusting Christ. I want Jesus, and you can begin to come right here, right now, the altar, the aisles, you can begin to come from the balcony, from the bleachers, you can come. Come on, let's give a big hand. Let's give a big hand for him. Come on, let's give a big hand. Let's thank you, Lord. Come on, set it in today. Set in your relationship from the balcony. Come on. Come on, church, people are coming to Christ. Okay, now I know, listen, listen, I know it's a long walk. (laughs) It's a long walk, I know, I I know it is. So if you're with a friend or neighbor or somebody, just whisper to them, just say, I'll go with you if you'd like. We're not trying to, I'm not trying to pull you. You Just say, I'll go with you if you'd like. And if you will, get a buddy, get a friend and come on. If you're here for the first time and you're alone, you could actually ask somebody, anybody with a t-shirt on, with a jacket, thank you. Can Can we praise God? She's coming. We praise the Lord. There, there's more. Come on. If you're here and you're alone, just ask somebody. All right. If you're single, it's your time to mingle. No, I'm just kidding. Ask somebody to come with you. You really do. You, you really do. You, you need somebody to. You need somebody to, to break the ice and to say, I don't want to be religious and stiff. But I wanna. I wanna come. He's he's coming alone. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing, don't leave here the same today. God bless you in overflow. God bless you at the campus. God bless you in the parking lot. And and so we're going to sing here for just a moment. We're going to sing. We're going to rally. This is your time. This is your time right now to make your way, to say with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. Come on, let's thank God.